Yes, would you please give a warm round of applause for Patrick Grove and Yambar Horman, Mr. Gobin Singh Deer. All right. Um, <clears throat> welcome. Thank you, thank you so much for taking time of your schedule to join us today. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, like every time when we've had an amazing VIP guest at Walt Digital, we start off the segment by giving them a special gift. And <clears throat> we wanted to give you a gift. Really? <clears throat> <clears throat> but we were told very strictly by our office, no gifts allowed anymore. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I guess I won't give you a free iFlix account for 12 months. Uh, <clears throat> But so we insisted, we said, look, we, you know, we really want to be respectful of here. We really want to give you a gift. And they said, no, <clears throat> ministers cannot accept any gifts except food. Yes. <clears throat> As you can see, uh, lots of uh, food <clears throat> in the last month. So you know what? We got you some food. Ah, uh, okay. So let's bring it out. <clears throat> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, <clears throat> a big round of applause for uh, our minister's <laughs> new gift, and he promises to eat the entire cake during the session. Seriously? <laughs> which, which, where's the cake? <laughs> <clears throat> so, I'm sure all of you know that the World Cup is on, and, and one of the promises uh, made by our generous minister was that the World Cup would be free on TV for everyone to watch. So I want to get a show of hands. How many people have been watching the World Cup on RTM? Yeah? Wow. <clears throat> Wait, so that means the rest of you are very atas and paying someone else to watch World Cup. <laughs> <clears throat> so what I thought we'd do is... Um, tell me about that. Tell, tell me about that World Cup move. Like, what, what was the thinking behind that? Yeah. <laughs> Let us get. Yeah, okay. Okay. This is, the, this is the funniest cake I've seen. It's like a football cake, right? Um, well, thank you, everyone. Um, when it came to uh, the World Cup, uh, the first thing that, that people told me was that they couldn't remember RTM anymore and uh, that there was a need for us to try and promote it. Yeah. Uh, so, of course, uh, timing was good just after the elections. In fact, we had actually said in uh, uh, the manifesto that if we had uh, won, then we would make efforts to uh, air the World Cup live. But, you know, uh, we could only get certain mm. games shown. I think uh, it was a total of 61, if I'm not mistaken. I'm yep. uh, no, sorry, a uh, total of 41. And uh, some of them were live, some of them delayed. Mm. Uh, but I think it's good because at the end of the day, uh, RTM <clears throat> has got greater reach than Astro. Mm. You must remember that many people out there don't have Astro. Yep. Uh, a lot of them enjoy football. Football very popular in Malaysia. Yep. And uh, I think this is uh, an effort uh, that uh, a lot of people, especially in the outside, uh, the uh, rural areas appreciate. Uh, so uh, we finally managed to bring uh, uh, football to them, uh, the screen. Of course, uh, Argentina lost, but yep. uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, good game though. But I think, uh, by and large, uh, people come together when they watch football. Yep. Uh, it is a, it's, a, it's great to uh, sometimes sit uh, with them uh, in the warung and so forth, and mm. coffee shops, and, and, and just watch everybody come together. <clears throat> so uh, I think it's been a success. Uh, some hiccups here and there, uh, especially the delayed telecasts. But uh, by and large. Uh, good feedback. I, I, I hope all of you all enjoy it. Mm. Uh, sorry we don't have all the games, but uh, we have most of them. Uh, and uh, let's see who gets to the finals. Yep. <coughs> Who's your favorite? No, no. England. Uh, no. Well, after, after what Neymar did, did that day. Uh, uh, Brazil, of course. Uh, yep. Beautiful. At, uh, <coughs> mm. so, so moving on from World Cup, what I did is that to research for the interview. Because mm. um, I'm a tech guy and I didn't have much time. I just basically did a Google image search. Right. And, and I pulled up some images and I thought, I wanted to talk about some of them. This is 
This is one of my favorite photos that I found of you on Tine. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? And I think that was actually at Anwar's house. Yes, uh, that was the day uh, that Anwar Ibrahim was released. Yep. Um, and of course, I went to his house. And the reason why I, uh, you, 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 you get, um, why we were laughing was because uh, after so many years, uh, it was really easy to, to, to get to meet him, you know, because mm. uh, normally when you go to prison, uh, you've got to go through this whole process of uh, uh, being uh, scanned mm. down, uh, you've got to make uh, arrangements, then there are layers of police officers that, uh, you know, meet you and then take you to him, and when you meet with him, yep. uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it's very difficult. Mm. Uh, so when you are so used to that, after such a long period of time, and suddenly you can just walk into his house and sit right next to mm. him and, uh, you know, it was really a, you know, a moment of joy. So uh, that, that's why, uh, you know, I think both of us were happy. And uh, it's good to see him, you know, he's a great guy, uh, I know mm. Ibrahim, a man who's been through so much and, and yet uh, still uh, so energetic and, and yep. you know, all ready to move ahead. So it was a great day, uh, you know, and it was good to meet him. Yep. Of course, you can see Mr. Lim Kit Siang also in the picture yep. uh, on his right. Uh, and I think uh, it's good to have uh, them uh, together. Mm. And um, yeah, so it was a great day, great moment for me. Beautiful. And I think that was a good photo mm. that was captured by uh, someone who was obviously standing across us from, from the angle of the, of the yep. photograph. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so, so when now, you know, the, I'm, I'm very curious to know, like, how do you guys communicate? Like, how does yourself and Dr. M and the other ministers, how do you guys keep in touch or communicate? So, if, like, for instance, with me, we have, we have a great team that's put on Wild Digital, and we have a WhatsApp group chat yep. that if you look at it at any one point in time, there's something like 20 unread messages, and they keep coming in. Yep. Like, how do you and Dr. M and, and some of the other ministers, are you, are, you, are you like WhatsApp kind of guys? Are you Facebook Messenger guys? Or, or, or because you were formerly from the opposition, maybe you guys are Telegram kind of guys. Like, <coughs> like, like, how do you guys keep in touch? Uh, we just call each other, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Mm. It's old school, you know. Well, old school, okay. Yeah. yeah. A bit of FaceTime every now and yeah, then. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that, that, it happens <laughs> once in a while. You press the wrong button, you know, <laughs> and then you realize, like, oh, <laughs> Mr. So, Prime Minister. Yeah. If I looked in your phone, and, and I'm not, so don't worry. Would Would there be a group chat right now that has like you, <clears throat> Doctor M, Anwar, and a few others? No. No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, of course, there are, I've got lots of WhatsApp groups. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, they have, we've got groups uh, at, at all levels. Uh, I mean, of course, the most uh, mm. uh, um, controversial one being the family group. Ah. Uh, <coughs> I'm sure all of you all have that as well, right? <coughs> sometimes, you know, you, yeah, but, but yeah, so we do communicate. But, you know, sometimes with WhatsApp groups, there are too many messages and you really can't keep up. Because, right. you, know, you don't know what the conversation's about. And suddenly you might say the wrong thing and everyone's like, you know, uh, what's wrong with this guy, you know? <laughs> it happens all the time. Mm. So, you know, yeah, but we do keep in touch uh, in terms of groups. Uh, that's something that we do. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Speaking of family, this is one of the other great photos that I found, I found on the net. And, um, you know, your, your father has been such a great inspiration, yep. both to yourself and so many other people in the country. And I was just, you know, wanted to learn a little bit. You know, when you study people that have done great things in their life, more often than not, you know, there was a great mentor in their life who, who really was there to keep them on track and, and, on, and almost discipline them to persevere and to keep pushing. And I, I wanted to kind of, I wanted you to share something with us, say, about your father's <clears throat> influence on you that, that you've never shared with anyone before. <clears throat> my, my late father, um, hmm. I mean, all of you know that um, he, 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 people think he's a very strict, uh, uh, what do you call no no-nonsense hmm. kind of. Uh, kind of guy, but but actually, if you really got to know him, right, mm. he's a very humorous guy, you know, mm. very funny guy, and uh, I loved working with him yep. uh, simply because uh, he knew uh, how to manage people around him. Uh, of course, he'd put us through a lot in the sense that he'd make us work uh, mm. because you know there was a lot of work to do, uh, but he was always able to laugh, and I think yep. that's the most important thing. And I've learned that you know, all of us work, all of us have problems, all of us have things to do. We've got timelines, things are tight, things are tough. But you remember one thing, right? Never forget to laugh because that's what, that, that's what keeps you going mm. and that's what's going to take you to the next day, you know? Mm. So this is what my late father taught me, right? And uh, oh. you know what I mean? I, I still, 
I still practice that even in my office uh, to, to today. Sometimes the staff look at me and they're not sure, you know, whether I'm serious or not. But uh, I think uh, if we are all able to let ourselves go, yep. uh, you know, sometimes mm. uh, we're able to do things better you know, because we understand each other. And, and I think uh, that, that's, what, that's what you need, uh, especially if you work in, in, you know, in, in circumstances which are tense, uh, yep. Yep. Like, like me every day, you know. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Beautiful. Speaking, uh, <clears throat> speak, speaking of work, um, tell me about this. So I don't know how many people, how many people here actually know our honourable minister's nickname. What does anyone know? Does anyone know the nickname from his constituency? What louder? <laughs> little tiger. <clears throat> little little tiger. So tell us, like, how did that? How did that, why are you the little tiger? Why are you not the big tiger? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I think it was, it was a little lion of Wuchung, and uh, this was 10 years ago. Mm. So I, 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 I was, you know, put on a lot of weight after that, so i uh, grown a bit bigger. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, but I suppose it has to do with, uh, with mm. me in Parliament. Uh, that's what people say to me. Uh, parliament 10 years ago, as far as I'm concerned, was very different. You were in mm. the opposition, and uh, you know, things in, uh, are quite different when you're mm. in opposition in government. In opposition, of course, uh, questions, and yep. you know, strategy, mm. how it is uh, you pitch things, arguments, uh, trying to get answers, trying to you know, open up things that people uh, are thinking about. Mm. Uh, it's very different from being in government. In government, of course, uh, you know, uh, answers and, and, and how you how you respond to, uh, to, to those sensitive <coughs> questions. So I think uh, in the process of uh, the debates in parliament, um, sometimes things mm. become very, very heated up. Uh, because they become heated up, uh, you respond in a certain way. Uh, of course, I've been quite, uh, quite uh, loud. I've been mm. suspended many, many times mm. in parliament. <laughs> I was suspended once for one year uh, without, <laughs> without salary even. I mean, you know. So records of sorts. Mm. I think it's from there that uh, you know, people uh, started to say that, and uh, mm. that's how it's, it's caught on. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure why it's still little, uh, mm. but uh, well, it's still there. I, I think mm. you know, that part of it hasn't been updated, so, so, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Okay, before we get a little bit more personal. Ah, ah. ah so. <clears throat> beautiful, I, I, mo beautiful motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, was, I wasn't sure, and I wanted to clarify, was this, was this a photo of you, just like your typical day on the way to work? Or, or, or is this like the next poster for like a Bollywood movie? Well, uh, that, that's Sangeeta, my wife. Uh, <laughs> she's seated behind me. Uh, you know, uh, we went for a, a dinner. This, I think, was Vasaki, mm. Slango, the Slango State Vasaki open house mm. two years ago. Uh, so uh, when we went there, of course, motorcycles around. And uh, someone said, hey, why don't you get on it? So I got on it. And then my wife said, oh, wait a moment. And she got on it. And this, uh, this is the photograph we got. I mean, you know, nice, <coughs> well, I think. Yeah. But, but my motorcycle wasn't moving, it was on a stand, so, uh, yeah, yeah. So, I've got a few more questions, but there's one question. When I've asked most people in the room, I said, what would you like me to ask the minister? And I think what you have before you in the room is you probably have the top 800 internet entrepreneurs or investors or professionals from around Malaysia and Southeast Asia, and I think a lot of people are, are really dying to know, particularly as, as the minister responsible for this area of the economy, kind of, you know, what, what are your thoughts going forward? So far, we know that you like free football. <laughs> <laughs> so far, we know that you want the internet to be faster and cheaper, which I think everyone in the room completely supports. But I think, kind of, you know, broadly, as you look out kind of the next two, three, four, five years, what, you know, what would you love, to, you know, how can we help? What would you love to see the internet industry achieve in the years going forward? I think we have to look at it from where it, it, it started. And uh, if you look at the internet uh, today, uh, it's a lot different uh, from uh, what it was perhaps 10, year, 10 years ago. Uh, people are looking at different sectors. People are looking at different areas of interest. Uh, you know, if you looked at internet 10 years ago, you're talking about things like YouTube, basic mm. stuff. You know, uh, of course, at that point in time, innovative. People are looking at uh, social media mm. and how it is, uh, you know, you, you connect uh, a lot faster. Uh, but now people are looking at niche areas. You're looking at, of course, startups. Uh, mm. You've got, you've got, 
you've got games, you've got animation, uh, you know, you, you've got different, different uh, clusters. So I think what we need to look at is uh, how we move on from there. Uh, we've got to start approaching it from a very different angle. We've got to understand that you cannot speak about uh, this industry, uh, uh, what you call in a general sense anymore. Uh, as far as my ministry is concerned, uh, I'm trying to instill that in, in, in most of them to say that you've got to start looking at them from different, uh, in different categories mm. and you've got to try, start, start to find ways where you can help them build mm. their respective industries. Mm. And if you do that, then you'll realize that all these industries have got problems of their own, mm. problems which are, which are uh, uh, peculiar to that particular uh, um, sector. Mm. So uh, if one, uh, what you call, is, is, is interested in gaming, for example, e-sports, for example, mm. uh, it's going to be quite different from one who's more interested in documentaries mm. and trying to uh, put forward just short uh, video clips uh, mm. uh, to make a point. Uh, and I think that's what we need to do. We need to understand that uh, things are changing all over the world. I mean, all of you here are, are participants in this industry. Uh, most of you all here understand uh, how it is things have changed and things are going to change yep. uh, very quickly in <coughs> the years to come. So I think uh, in terms of uh, the ministry and how this the government can assist, uh, first and foremost, we've got to appreciate uh, that we've got to keep up with the time. We've got to keep up with all of you here. Mm. We've got to try and find ways to work with you all. I think it's got to be the other way around now where we've got to find out what you need in order to get where you want to, uh, uh, to be. And this is, the, this, is, this is why the challenges of today are slightly mm. different. If we keep on moving um, the same way as we did 10 years ago, then I don't think you're going to be able to keep up with the industry. Mm. And I think at the end of the day, uh, you're not going to be able to develop with it. Uh, so yeah. this is how I look at, at things uh, today. And of course, I, I, I keep saying to everybody, this, it, we are moving very fast. Uh, you don't really have uh, uh, much time. You either keep up or you, or you mm. just get left out. You know? So <coughs> I think that's something that everyone here has to bear in mind. Of course, uh, the ministry, uh, apart from facilitating, assisting, finding ways by which we can help, uh, we've also got to look at regulation. Mm. So the leg regulatory aspect of it is something that's of great concern to me. Mm. I think that if you look at uh, uh, ASEAN, you look at uh, countries around us, mm. there's been a concern about the fact that uh, when it comes to the internet, uh, when something happens, it happens everywhere. Okay. Uh, you know, you can have an incident happening in Malaysia today on the internet, that same incident is happening in Japan as well because everyone's looking at the same space. Uh, so the question is, how do we deal with that? How do we regulate it? How do we get people to respond fast enough? And, uh, and of course, the third, th the third aspect of it is education. How do we speak uh, to the young today to, 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 to prepare them for technology and to say to them that uh, they too can be a part of it? Mm. And I think we need to start uh, looking at talent from a very young age. Uh, so that we can actually make sure that those who are interested are put on the mm. right direction. Uh, government must understand that they have a role to play to assist them as well, yep. uh, so that uh, we, know we can make the best of it uh, as fast as we possibly can. Mm. Uh, those are the thoughts that I have uh, in a glance, in a, yep. in a nutshell of yep. what it is I want to do in my ministry. Uh, Beautiful. I hope that, understand, that, that explains it. No, completely. And I, I think one of the things that Malaysia has, you know, as last time we spoke, we were saying, you know, Malaysia has historically been a great hub of some of the largest internet companies in Southeast Asia. So people like Job Street, iProperty, yeah. iFlix, yep. Grab. You know, these were all Malaysian-born companies. And you know, so yet Malaysia only has a population of 30 million, but Southeast Asia has 800 million people. Malaysia consistently, and I think it's a beautiful thing, punches above its weight in yep. terms of the value creation in the internet economy. And, 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 and I wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, is this something that, that your ministry, and particularly Malaysia, is, is, is still want to support and want to build and grow upon? Yeah, definitely. I think we, we, we definitely want to support it. Mm. We definitely want to try and understand it a lot mm. better. And uh, we've got to look at it uh, from two perspectives. One, uh, domestically, uh, what we have mm. here in terms of talent and how we build on it. Mm. And uh, number two, in respect of how it is, we can actually try and attract talent uh, mm. from abroad so that they can come here and be part of the process. Yep. Uh, when that happens, of course, we've got uh, it's an investment of sorts because you bring ideas in, you're bringing new technology in, you're bringing a completely new face mm. uh, to uh, perhaps a uh, same situation, which uh, I think is what you need in order to look at things mm. from, from all directions so that you can actually build a better product. But at the same time, I think we've got to understand that we've got competitors mm. uh, very close to us mm. who are doing, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, their best to try and pull uh, that talent away from us as well. So I think the ministry, at the end, end of the day, really, uh, you, you, this, is the, this is the kind of industry mm. where you really need to get into the thick of it. Yep. So you understand what's going on, uh, you understand 
uh, what do you call, um, what's, what's really pulling the interest uh, yep. f at that moment so that you can actually capitalize on it and grab it yep. uh, while it's hot. You know? exactly. And if you don't, uh, as I said again, uh, before you know it, uh, someone else has taken advantage of it, taken uh, mm. what do you call, uh, uh, what do you call uh, the opportunity yep. and of course uh, made, made a huge success out of it. Something you could have done but you, know, you didn't do because uh, you just... Uh, uh, mm. uh, didn't know how to do it. So I think this is the reason why um, the ministry plays an important role. Uh, quite apart from us looking around to see what's happening and to try to identify uh, uh, what's developing and yep. what's uh, what you call latest, uh, we, we should also have a mechanism by which we can actually ensure that, uh, that, that, that those people that are involved in our industry are, are also up to date. Yep. And uh, I think the best way for us to do this is to make sure that uh, we can encourage them uh, be it by capital, otherwise, you know, uh, mm. other incentives uh, to encourage them to actually uh, take part in, 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 in the industry uh, from from a very from 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 a very very early stage, yep. so you can, you can yep. maximize uh, in terms sure. of benefit uh, that comes with it. Beautiful, thank you. Um, two last questions. Take your time. <clears throat> so, okay. seeing as you are the minister of communications and multimedia, yeah. That must mean that you're probably the best in the country at using social media. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <clears throat> Good answer. So speaking of social media, are, are you, what's your preferred platform? Are you, are you like a, a Facebook guy or a MySpace guy or, or, or God forbid, Friendster or, or more Twitter or Instagram? But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I know quite a few of you here. I can see you all from here. Uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, uh, follow me on Twitter. You've got Jack at the back there, of course, a friend mm. of mine as well. Uh, Twitter. Twitter. Yes, okay. When I have more time, Facebook. Mm. Uh, but you know, being being in the ministry, I I tend to uh, be on my feet a lot, so it's a bit difficult. Mm. Um, um, but I find time. Mm. I, I know if I can say I notice on Facebook, you're you're a bit like me. You're very you're a lazy Facebook poster because you just retweet what you put on Twitter. No, that's what I just said, because I'm on my feet all the yeah. time, so, you know, uh, that, that's what happens. But, you know... Uh, so, <clears throat> we looked at your Twitter feed. Ah. Mm. So you know my problems. Yeah, you, 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 you get in some, some pretty interesting Twitter, uh, Twitter debates. <coughs> Do you remember the first Twitter post that you ever made? Nope. Do you? I, 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 yeah. I do. I do. Does anyone want to see it? Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so th this, is, this is the Minister of Multimedia and Communication, so the number one person in the world, or in Malaysia, on social media. And this was your very first Twitter post. <laughs> you ready? Was that meant to be a private post? No, no, no. no. Uh, <laughs> Hannah is the member of parliament for mm. Gambut, uh, you know, also a, a, what do you call, a politician. So she's the one, actually, I think, if you remember, she's the one that got me onto Twitter. Mm. And, um, you know, yeah, the rest is history. Yeah. <clears throat> do you remember your first Facebook post? <laughs> <laughs> nope, I don't, of course. <clears throat> you got that as well? Well, <clears throat> Gosh. I, I didn't want to do a screenshot because it basically said, hey, Hannah, I'm on Facebook as well. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, I do have your first Facebook post, and it's a really, really beautiful post. So I'm actually going to put it up. Can everyone read that? Okay. Wow. Did, you, did you have any? <laughs> <coughs> it's amazing what's on the web, huh? Yeah, it's been 10 years. Mm. Mm. Incredible, huh? Yeah. But what were you thinking when you wrote that? Uh, well, I was thinking what I said, you know, uh, if you look at it, it's basically on, on <coughs> future shaping of the country and uh, how it is, you know, we need to move ahead. Uh, of course, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, concern about... Uh, of, about um, Malaysia, as, as mm. you know, as we moved ahead, trying to bring everyone together, mm. and I think uh, that's probably what was on my mind when I, I wrote it uh, back in 2010. 
Beautiful. Uh, I think maybe uh, things have changed quite a bit since then. Uh, that was when you know I was an opposition MP. Mm. Um, good. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. So you know what, from the bottom of my heart and from everyone else, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. <coughs> thank you. Mm. So, <coughs> one, one last favor. Who wants to be in a selfie with our honorable minister right now? Can we get everyone to stand up and we're going to take a quick selfie? Okay. Are we ready? Let's do this. <coughs> Are we going to tag Hannah Yo? Of course, you should. Okay, we should, we should, we should definitely tag Hannah Yo. Okay. All right. Where do we stand? Uh, let's, let's, let's stand here. Okay. We're going to everyone to put their hands up. Yeah. Were you, were you with your camera? Yes. Okay. Hello, Maya. Hi, how are you? I'm well. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> uh oh, how do I do this? Okay. 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 I'm going to do one as well. Okay. okay. Everyone ready? Everyone ready? Okay, we're good. You're in there. Beautiful. Okay, let me get one. Uh, <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, man. That was the best. What are you going to do with this cake? Makan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, a nice warm round of applause for the Minister of Communications and Multimedia Malaysia, Yang Berhormat, Mr. Gobin Singh Deo, accompanied, ladies and gentlemen, by Patrick Grove. Thank you very much, Yang Berhormat Menteri, for your candid conversation with Wild Digital 2018.